Seguimos en el de Latinoamérica 2016 haciendo la cobertura del evento. Nos visita Dr. Mohamed Matkur, eh, con quien hablamos hace cinco años y lo volvemos a tener ahora aquí en este evento para hablar de lo que está presentando Huawei en el Congreso. Dr. Mohamed, welcome to Telesemana.com, five years later. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me again. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, pleasure. So let's see what, what Huawei, obviously, it's uh, quite visible here at the show. You have probably the biggest uh, stand here. Uh, yeah. So tell us what, what are you presenting in terms of LTE and LTE Advanced Pro, which okay. are probably the main steps towards the evolution of the technology and also, many say, are the beginning of 5G. Sure, actually you said the whole story in this okay, sentence, so let me, yeah, 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 let, me, let me tell you, it was very, uh, very cutely, I mean, uh, actually exactly uh, put together. So, so as always, I mean, we have been so consistent for that market in Latin America to uh, participate in that event and every year we're kind of moved like all of our global strategy and ideas and solutions we uh, made it available for Latin America market because Latin America is very strategic market for us. So when it comes to Huawei strategy in general, it's very simple. We empower all of our customers and potential customers with the best technology innovations. And the reason for that is we wanted to enhance their top line and bottom line. We wanted to enhance their services, no matter whether it's existing services or arming them with new services as well. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time, the bottom line, we need to reduce as much as we can the cost for bit and the, for at the same time the cost for service. So given these two directions, we are offering, I mean, of course LTE is mature globally. Latin America, it has not been that, the, the penetration is not the high that we expected. However, I or Huawei, we expect that the next few years, the growth is going to be much more steep than the uh, the growth that happened in the last two years thanks to all of the smartphones that's in the marketplace and the price and everything so so LTE there so we started from LTE advance as you mentioned mm -hmm. so the product is there we have a lot of features that all of our customers can choose from to enhance the speed and the network experience that's from LTE advance but what the story we're talking about this year actually is 4.5G, which is the same as you mentioned, LTE Advanced Pro. Pro. You know, we, um, uh, back in 2014, we already announced uh, our uh, strategy for 4.5G, and we worked with the standard. It was standardized, I think, last year. So the, the, uh, the excitement that we have is we have 4.5G product ready as we speak today, mm -hmm. and we already have a lot of success in the first quarter and a lot of our customers in, uh, in, in China, in uh, Europe, even in Middle East, to adopt uh, uh, adopt 4.5G, and uh, and also we we uh, we expect that in 2016 about 60 contracts 4.5G or LTE Advanced Pro as 3GPP will call it. Um, that's for 4.5G. For us, our strategy from 4.5G is clear. The only way that the operator, no matter Latin America or globally, prepare themselves for 5G is to adopt 4.5G. The thread that ties 4.5G and 5G is the IoT. Okay. Because all of the operator you know now is on consumer business, and consumer business is not going to sustain the business success in the next five years. So the verticals come into play. Perfect. So they need to, to uh, get to new markets, new revenue streams. Those revenue streams can be can come realistic in, can come to reality by narrowband IoT, mm -hmm. which is part of 4.5G. We say 4.5G can give us three major things: more connections for narrowband IoT, more experience like high depth voice and video, and at the same time higher speed one gigabit per second. So 4.5G right now, and what we did actually we pulled the, some of the features from 5G, we deployed them on 4G. Things like massive MIMO, mm -hmm. cloud based station. Those things were actually supposed to be in 5G, but there is no reason for them to wait. So let's get them here. 4.5G also, as we chatted actually before, it supports different aggregations, massive carrier aggregation up to uh, two, three, four bands. Mm -hmm. So, so if, when we aggregate bands, we can also talk about unlicensed, we can also talk about LAA. LAA, the direction of LAA is there. So, so, so 4.5G is holistic from that, uh, from that perspective. It gets us to 5G. 5G is not here yet. However, a lot of activities are happening in 5G, especially from Huawei side. And the beyond the technological innovations, I think 
what Huawei's strategy and 5G is the open collaboration and between all of the ecosystem because 5G is not going to get to reality the same way as 4G did. We did 4G by ourselves, like, you know, as a vendor equipment mm -hmm. solutions. But for 5G, we need all to get together. When you mean all, you're referring to? Everybody, that's even our competitors. Okay. Like, you know, we hand in hand with like, comp like uh, the, all of the vendors, OEMs, uh, 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 like verticals. Even we join uh, hand in hand with governments, industries, uh, academia, university, because all of them we need to come together in order to make it reality. Um, so so the, 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 the fundamental success factor for 5G is open collaboration. And the other thing is the business model. So if you ask us like i don't think technological innovation is the key barrier for 5g it is the need for that as a matter of fact today in the panel we had a, a very nice conversation is uh, we, we 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 told operator if you look at 5g to solve your current problem today then you are talking about the wrong technology okay. no it is not it is needed for you to think strategically as a direction and the act now when it comes to 4.5G, narrowband IoT, and that will make you uh, move forward. Um, that's from the air interface perspective. Another two key areas, which is the network architecture. Uh, the fundamental component for the network architecture for, for, for 5G is network function virtualization, mm -hmm. software defined networking, because this is the foundation that you can build cloud formation and network slicing as well. Uh, splitting the hardware and software, control plane and, 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 and user plane. Now, now these things, you, you don't have to wait until 5G, so you can do it now. Okay. So the question was, can we start 5G today? And the answer is yes, you can even by as simple as starting by virtualizing one network function. Now you are in the territories of going to 5G. Use all of your spectrum, aggregate aggregate them, do the reforming, uh, make LTE ubiquitous, prepare your band, work on your backhaul, uh, deploy more sites because 5G will need more sites. Mm -hmm. So all of those can happen today and it will serve the 5G purpose. Once the business is evolving and it, it is successfully getting you there, you will find the reason in four or five years to put islands of 5G to connect the industries and to have more opportunities. Okay, uh, concentrating a little bit on NFB. Sure. Uh, one, one thing is to have, so I want to know your opinion in terms of how mature are we in terms of deploying NFB, because one thing would be to have just one BNF, for example, an Evolve Packet Core virtualized. And a different thing would be to have a mano layer completely set up so you can actually ch interchange resources between BNFs and so on. So I under my understanding is that, that today we can virtualize different functions. Mm -hmm. uh, how far are we to orchestrate them together oh, so yeah. you can actually use the resources? That's a very good point, actually. So, so you wanted to get all of the advantage of virtualization, yes. right? So actually to get the full-fledged advantage of virtualization when you have re real resource pooling, like when you really can do that. And we're not very far from that. Actually, a major, a major uh, uh, a strategic direction, which is the orchestrating telco operating system. So the, the orchestrating software, which we call MANO, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, this is actually fundamentally important. And it is there. I do not see any technical reason for that to be not there or okay. to be delayed. But are you seeing operators actually already mismatching BNFs and, and resources at this point, pooling and? We, we, we are doing. It is not fully commercialized in a large scale, but a lot of our customers, okay. they wanted to see how we can orchestrate. Okay. Because that's for them a major thing in order to get the full benefit um, of, yeah. of, of virtualization. Okay, we haven't mentioned small cells, although you did mention mm. uh, rich capacity and having more, more coverage and so on. I don't know what uh, Huawei's position in the small cell market. Why are you pursuing outdoor, indoor, and so on? What is your strategy in the in Yeah, the actually, actually, small cells, and we can, we can generalize it into indoor coverage in general. Um, it's a key for us. We believe, actually, that there is a, 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 an immediate need for small cells in a lot of places, like for example, indoor, uh, like shopping malls, airports, uh, uh, all of those areas, they need densification, they need capacity beyond just 
covering them with passive, just passive coverage. And we have had actually a lot of success uh, last two years in, 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 in the small cell market. Uh, uh, last year uh, in uh, Mobile World Congress, we got uh, uh, the, the Best Infrastructure Award for the LAMP site, mm -hmm. our, uh, uh, our Ethernet-based or cloud ran based uh, uh, solution, small cell solution. Uh, that basically were deployed in many places, many airports, and the result is humongous. So that's uh, that's the one that uh, that we have based on cloud uh, cloud BB. We have also Pico. We have Micro Outdoor. Also, these are also ready product. The cool thing about our small cell is the modularity. You know, when you do small cells, you cannot just come to the place different. You know, one more time in order to uh, change. Uh, or add technolo technology or use certain uh, expansion. So what we did, we did two things. We did the small cell itself, the Pico or the Micro or, or the, the Pinto. Yeah. Uh, so not you're not doing much, uh, no, 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 not anymore. We're okay. focusing. We're focusing on on the lamp side, the Pico, okay. the Micro. What we did, we made it modular. We in, we included Wi-Fi. That's number one. We made it modular. You can have 4G. You can have 3G. And also you can have even higher order MIMO. So basically, this small cell is not small in features. It is not small in, in capability. It has almost the same capability technology perspective as the macro cell. It's just, it's it's a smaller in power, covering the smaller place and satisfying other um, other purpose. So that's the first thing about, uh, about small cells, which is the modularity and the composition itself. The other thing about small cell is remote um, uh, remote, uh, you 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 can you can activate certain modules. You can activate certain cells if you are covering a big area remotely, okay. and that's also another. Huge that's part of the thing. cloud uh, run the, solution. That th that that's that's part of yeah. If you can if you can make it if you can make it cloud BB, then for, from that you can do. Uh, and, and do you think that cloud it's it's a key component of deploying small cells because of the fact that you're going to have a lot of them deployed, and probably you want to use cloud somehow to yes and no yes and no okay. like for our lamp site we use the cloud bb okay. that's that's for our lamp site but for for others no you don't why have to. why the lamp is, is so critical to have to have it on the cloud well because because if you have a building for example and and you need to cover that building with some with some radio i mean it is it makes much more sense to have all of the baseband in the base of the building okay. and then by kind of extension uh, extending fibers to so it would be, be like a DAS sort of. It would resemble. It is, it is no. It is different from DAS because you can have it is powered over power over Ethernet. So okay. you can use the existing wiring in the building. You don't have to vibe. you didn't, mess have, up to, with you it, didn't yeah. have to add up like fibers or whatever. So you can use that. So so basically, what you need to do with the with the lamp side head, you just you just need to uh, connect it to the Wi-Fi so and, the power, Ethernet. and it's powered over Ethernet. Okay, it's powered over. Ethernet. All right. Well. Dr. Mohamed, thank you so much for being here. We're going to leave it here, and if somebody has more doubts about your solutions, they should visit your website. Sure, okay. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. It was a pleasure. Thank so you.